you little pipsqueaks. You guys ready to get tidy? Tidy time. Hey guys, hey piggy people. So I'm going to be doing our evening routine. It looks like a mess in here. I need to clean up after I'm done. I did already do our medications because it's like a little pharmacy. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. So Apple's had her meds, Pecan has had her meds, and we are ready to start. So the other day, well the last video I had made I said that Apple seemed better after I thought she was passing another stone, but evidently she went back to seeming like she was passing a stone again. Hey bud. So who knows? So luckily, when she seems well, I have her on the lower end of uh, pain meds. And then when she seems like she's sore, I put it back up to higher. Luckily, most of the time she seems perfectly fine on the lower end, which is good. But we put it up higher just the other day, so she seems more comfortable now. And hopefully, if she is passing a stone, that it'll be coming out or has come out. The one that I found that one day was just by luck because it was all by itself, not mixed in the hay. And it was on a dark piece of fleece, so a creamy colored stone stuck out really obvious. Where if she ever passed a stone, like in these hay piles, I would never notice. It would be so hard to see. And I don't want to spend my life every morning checking or every evening checking through hay. So anyway, that's all with Apple. She's otherwise she's doing well. She's holding her weight at 900 grams. So what more can you ask for? And Pecan's doing really well. So as you guys know, they this end of the cage is where Pecan and Apple spend their night. So usually about 10 at night, I put these girls in this section and block it off and then they just have the whole evening, the rest of the evening and all through the early morning to spend together. So they're in there about 10 p.m. till like 6.30 in the morning or just after. And they get along perfect, never any trouble. And they're both very easy going and just like to eat their hay and sleep. So it's been working out great. And then when I open it up for the whole herd to come around, there's never any issue with anybody. So that's good. It doesn't seem to be stressing anybody out. And it makes me feel a lot better knowing that both of those girls aren't going to be pushed around. That they just both get to relax and eat and drink and sleep wherever they want. It's not saying the rest of the herd is purposely pushy, but they can get a little rowdy sometimes. Whoops, excuse me. I was trying to get a poop behind your bum. Hi, you're so handsome. What are you doing? What are you doing getting in the way? You're always getting in the way. Wherever I'm cleaning, He's always coming over. So who else can we update you on? Reese, thankfully, since we finished her antibiotics, still has a dry bum. So when I clean the cages fully, which is twice a week, I added her to my list of checkups. So I just, before you know, I block off this part when I'm cleaning this side of the cage so that all the pigs are here and it's easier to grab the pigs that I need to grab because velvet's one of the ones that I grab every single cage clean to do stuff with. Apple, usually pecan, I check now too. But anyway, when Reese is over here, before I put her to the fresh side, I've started picking her up just to have a look to make sure her bum looks okay so that we never get scalded again. Hi, sweetie. How are you? How are you, my sweetheart? She is just the sweetest little thing. So sweet and so smart. And I actually think that Reese 
knows her name when I say Reese Bear. Because the other day I had a little digestive tablet for her. The ones from Sherwood. I wanted to give her some after she was done her antibiotics just to make sure her tummy was okay. And she was off in the far corner not even looking at me. And I just stood right here and I said, Reese Bear. And she looked and she came running right over. So that was kind of cool. So I think the pigs that know that I'm talking to them are obviously Butter Pecan does. Um, Ray Ray, when I am talking to her, she'll listen. And Reese. Everybody else, I don't really think so. But I thought that was pretty cool. And Reese is definitely turning into a pig who just loves you to pet her. So it took her a little while to let you pet her full down her body. Because sometimes if you're petting her for a bit too long, she'd get freaked out. But just recently, she's decided that it's totally okay. So that's kind of cool. She's going to be a, like the next little snuggly pig for sure. Mole Velvet's over here. It's funny, Velvet really likes staying in this part of the cage. She's not too fussed about being over here. And most nights I'm finding now that when I'm coming down around 10 p.m., Pecan and Apple are here and the herd's all over here. So it's like they already are in the sections they are supposed to be. Apple usually is always there. Sometimes I have to get Pecan to come over. And you know that she knows that you want her to come over and she just stares at you sometimes like, do I have to? And eventually she'll come over. Hi, Elvie. How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm going to be taking all of this. So you probably won't want to stick around over this side. Hey, pretty girl. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. Yes, you are. You can be so shy sometimes. Oh, we did a little popcorn, though. You're so cute. She's such a happy pig, though. So I found a better way to sweep off stuff off the fleece. Before, I was using my hand, and I actually had dish gloves that I was using, and it wore right through them. So now I just use the cat litter scooper to get the hay off and actually gets it off way better than when I was using my hand. So that's a pro tip for anybody. I find it works way better because then there's hardly any stuff stuck on it because you can really do it kind of rough. But I thought that was pretty sad that dish gloves with how thick they seemed that eventually I wore out the fingers after only using them for like not even a month. But I guess I wasn't using them for their intended purpose. It's always a good idea when you're sweeping off your fleece to check the fleece to see if you see any areas of concern like blood or way too much calcium buildup, that kind of stuff. Oh, you're leaving? Yeah, there's nothing good over here yet. Once I get a fresh thing down, I'll put new hay. There, Velvet's over there now. Hi, little guys. Hello. Hey, Reese Beer. My gorgeous lady. Huck you with your weird eye that always looks like he's got bug eyes. I always start with the herd's cage to get it out of the way because I feel like the task is so daunting. There's so much space to cover, such a mess. And then when I get over to the pairs, it just seems like it's super quick. So sometimes I like when I have tasks to do, I find it overwhelming, even though I do the same thing every day, every morning and night. I just, I hate having a list of things to get through. So I find getting the herds thing over first just gives me some relief. Oh, it's quite messy down here. Yep, it feels a bit wet. 
Maybe I need to put a pad down there. Here we go. Okay, I need my step stool for this. This is the one part of the cage that I have to use the step stool just for this back part. Oops, sorry Apple. I'm sorry. You sleeping? Oh, I feel bad. I didn't know that she was in there. Oops, that's a rude awakening, isn't it? Somebody trying to move your bed. Oopsie. I guess I should count my pigs before I move in beds. So I gave the skinny pig sisters the herd's other hay box and then I forgot to check online about what to do for getting rid of that mold. Some people had great suggestions then I just have to check online about how you're supposed to do it. Some people were saying like sand off the mold. Other people said you could put it in the oven. So anyway, I have to check all that stuff to see what I should do about the little bit of mold on the skinny pig sisters hay box. Cause I do want the hay box back again for the herd. I like them having to and I'd rather not throw out a hay box if there's something I can do to fix it. So we'll, we shall find out. Cause it's main, it doesn't look like it's too deep into the wood. It's just mainly underneath and a little bit on the front where they were peeing the most. So we'll find out. Skinny pig sisters are little pee machines. Sorry, Apple, I just keep uprooting everything that you want to go under. That's what happens when I'm trying to tidy and everybody's going right where I'm cleaning. Oh, there's some calcium deposit that never came off in the wash. That's weird. Who are you rumbling to, Mr. Hucky? Okay, so I gotta go around. I guess I can put this up. This part right here is Velvet's favorite part to sleep. Probably because it feels nice and safe and away from everybody. Okay. Hey, sweetie. You girls make a big mess. Okay. Let's see how messy it is back here. That's not too bad. I think we can keep that pad till morning. So how is everybody else's pigs? Leave a comment down below and tell me how your piggies are doing. Sir, what are you doing? Inspecting? Do you find that your pigs have like spots where they usually like to sleep? Because I find most of the pigs stay within the same parts to sleep. You know what I mean? Like they have a favorite spot where you put one of their beds or they only like to sleep in a certain type of tunnel or under logs or what have you. I'm cheating. Sometimes I just can't sweep up stuff right over here. I do have some gloves on. Sometimes with my hands, with having to wash them so much, they're so dry and touching hay and pig stuff really, really irritates them. I do have allergies to the pigs and to hay. So 
I've had to wear gloves lately or my hands just get awful. Hi, how are you? How are you, beautiful? I can't believe that I've had butter pecan for like six and a half years, coming up on six and a half, because she'll be seven soon. And I got her when she was about six months, give or take. It's just so hard to believe, like, where does time go? It sucks, in a sense. You know what I mean? Like, you just want to have them forever and ever. And the fact that she's almost seven, it's scary. I love you. Okay, so that's about it for them. I'm just going to put a little bit more hay. And then when I'm done with everybody, I go check water bottles. I'm just going to give them some more Timothy hay. Lately, our Timothy hay has had so many yellow stalks, and I feel like I throw a lot out, which sucks, but what can you do? Like, they eat the green parts and the Timothy seed heads, but then, like, all of these stalks are left in the morning, and it just feels like you're throwing a ton out, but you can't make them eat it. Do you want a little bit of the orchard grass? Here you go. Hey, sweetheart. You're a little sweetie. You're just a sweetie, too. Both of you girls are so sweet. That's probably why you're such good buddies for your sleepovers. Yeah, this is how I usually find it now. They're kind of used to hanging out. And then those four are over there. But during the day, they do all co-mingle. It's just kind of funny that now they see this as like their section and that's their section. Okay. I don't know if I really need that in there right now. Okay, I really have to tidy up. I feel like this is just a, a war zone of clutter. Hey, sweetie Autumn. Where is Mr. Angus? There he is. Hi, Bubby. You're so cute. Oh, Angus is another pig who, I call him Bubby, and he seems to respond to that. I don't know why I call him that. I guess just because he seems like a little baby to me. But yeah, he always listens when I call him Bubby and comes over. He's also used to getting one of these digestive tabs. Just because he has the sensitive tummy. Back when I moved them over here, he had the tummy issues from being a bit stressed out from moving. And now he's kind of used to me giving him one of those. So it doesn't hurt him, so I do give him some. Okay. I think these are old because they feel wet. So we'll give some new ones out. I am never caught up on laundry. So I have the laundry to wash from changing their cages, but it's like almost every day somebody's cage needs new liners where their hay is or wherever they're peeing and pooping never ending but I do have to say it does save me a lot of money because I couldn't imagine having to pay disposable bedding price because here in Canada anyway disposable bedding is outrageous how much it costs especially if you want the nicer stuff like really soft paper-based bedding I'd say like Carefresh or even a knockoff Carefresh it's so expensive for a bag that wouldn't even fill like a quarter of the cage here. So I could not imagine how much it would cost me like every week or every two weeks to clean out a guinea pig cage. But the price I pay is doing a crap ton of laundry continuously. But I already decided one day I'm not going to have this many pigs. I just can't keep up with doing 10 pigs all the time. I have for like the past, what, 10 years. 
usually had 10 pigs. At one point, I think I had 11. But it's kind of to the point where I'm like, I think I would rather go down to having maybe six at most. Obviously, we're just talking naturally decreasing. Because usually, you know, if somebody passed away and some other pig was in need, I would adopt another pig. But I really just, I don't think that's going to be the way I'm going to do it anymore. It just gets to be too much. Like there, when everything's going well, I find guinea pigs just an absolute joy to look after, to just watch them doing their thing. I find them so therapeutic in the evenings. When every, like, usually it's after I'm done spot cleaning and have everybody set for the night that I'll just sit on the step stool and watch everybody. And, like, certain pigs will come over to say hi and get pet. And I just love seeing them do what they do. But the thing for me is when they're not well or when you have a pig with a chronic issue, it's just a constant stressor, a constant worry. So for myself, it's Apple. It's just a constant thing daily trying to assess of like, is she peeing okay? Is her pain under control? Because I mean, re in reality, eventually one day, you know, her kidneys could fail or she could have a stone lodged in her urethra. Like there's so many what ifs and unknowns that, you know, every day it's kind of, okay, what's she like today? And then on top of that, um, I definitely feel like Pecan's kind of in the same situation where, you know, she's almost seven. She has the chronic digestive issues, which we deal with a bloat episode maybe once a month. Maybe that's it if we're lucky. Sometimes it could be a bit more often, it just depends. But thankfully, uh, since I know the signs of her bloat, like I'm very on top of it. But it still, it takes a couple days to get her fully over it and get her back to looking 100% and pooping 100%. Okay, this is all soaked. See, this is a problem. See what I mean? Like this is mostly just stalks and it's all soaking wet because they don't want any more of it. Anyway, back to Pecan. Like I feel like she's another one that's, you know, I have to constantly assess and monitor and I'm just being real. Like when I come in the pig room in the morning, I always like searching with my eyes to be like, okay, where's Pecan? Is she still okay? Where's Apple? Is she still okay? That kind of thing. Yeah, this is going to look like a big bunch of waste, but this is all like yellow stalks that they don't want. And then another pig who's kind of on the back burner of things that I just more keep an eye on on cage cleaning nights is Velvet because she's the one who has the hernia. And I've never dealt with a pig with a hernia before, so it's kind of one of those things that I have no idea if it'll just stay the same for years and years and never be a problem. I don't know that. So it's kind of something that's on my mind, you know? And then just any other pigs at random times could have something happen because that's just pig life. So like the one time when Angus was having bad poops or Reese had the urine scald, or Raisins had UTIs before where she was peeing like little blood clots. It's always something. So I find 10 is a lot. I guess the, the moral of the story, there's some times where I just feel like, oh my gosh, I just, it's never ending with something's happening with someone where I think if I had like two, three, or four pigs, it'd probably be very um, 
very what? What's the word I'm looking for? Very seldom that I would have such an ordeal. But with 10 pigs and a bunch of them being seniors or coming up to being seniors, you know, look out. So I've mentioned before that I'm going to have a bunch of seniors all at the same time, which is going to be really difficult, especially if a lot of them start having arthritis and everybody's going to be on pain meds. So who knows how that's going to go. I find most of my seniors end up with some sort, some form of arthritis that you really do have to help them with or else they're very uncomfortable. So the seniors right now are apple and pecan and then coming up within a year or so, year, year and a half, is going to be the sisters raisin. Um, Reese and Angus won't be too far behind that so just it's a lot. I don't know how, I didn't want this to sound negative that it's not that I don't love my piggies and enjoy them I think I just feel a little bit stressed with a couple things that I've been dealing with lately you know with apple stones and with pecan when her teeth were looking funny that was stressful and then she's had a little bit of blow and then she had the days where she was really sore and we had to get her better pain meds because of her being a senior. Just stuff like that, it just kind of all wears on you. Cause honestly guys, there's some days where I'm just like, I feel like I can't even look after pigs right. Cause why do I keep having issues popping up? But then anybody I know who has a bunch of pigs as well, you know, they get it. That's like, that's life with pigs. Honestly, it's just, you never flip and know what's gonna happen. Okay, I need some beds for these girls. Probably have to go into the laundry room for that. Get them a nice pile of hay. These girls are doing so, so well. I just absolutely love how Annabelle just talks a lot now and she's always out and her weight is so much better now. She looks very healthy where before she was, I'd say she looked a little thin when she lived on her own, but she wasn't that active and she liked to hide. But since she's been back with her sister, everything's been great. And she's very loud in the morning yelling for veggies and she's talking at other times just so positive and these two girls have been uh watching the herd a lot too um the last piggies i saw it was huckle and velvet were over here and they were saying hi never will i try all these guys together because as i've said before annie's a little spitfire towards hucky she's fine for saying hello on the other side of the bars but she doesn't want to listen to them but it's nice that they can be safe neighbors. And it would be cool if I, if like Angus and Huckle would get along so that those two could be with them, but I don't know how you would ever have two males living together and I would never want to try it. Cause realistically, you're not supposed to ever have two males together. I know some people with really huge herds have, but anyway. You get what you get. So I am going to go find beds for them, fill up some waters, and clean up this messy, messy room. Because I just have stuff sitting all over. And we need to clean that up. So if you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. The link boxes, the link box, the description box is full of links because everybody always asks like where your hay box is from. Where do you get fleece, etc. Down in the description box. Okay guys, see you later. If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video.
Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!